So in here we have a purchase price of $145,000. We have earnest money of $1,500. We have a real estate commission that's 7%. We have tax stamps that are $150. We have a title policy that is $250 and it tells us it's paid by the seller. We have a deed recording that is $100. The closing fee is $350 and it's split. 50-50 between buyer and seller. We have a mortgage payoff. Yeah. Of 32575. Taxes are $1800. Paid in full for the year. And we close June 15th. So the first thing we're, we're asked to do on the next page is to prorate the taxes. So we're back to what we've just done before, where we have the $1,800. I'm going to divide that by 12. When I do that, I come up with $150 per month. I take $150 divided by 30, I come up with $5 per day. We're closing on June 15th, so there are five months here. So that makes that uh, 750, 15 days in June equals 75, adding those together is 825. Everybody with me on the tax proration so far? Again, that's for the first half of the year. We're concerned about the second half of the year. So I need to take eighteen hundred dollars minus eight twenty-five. I get nine seventy-five. That amount is the uh, the buyer is debited, and the seller is credited. That same amount. So it's the same steps we did on the previous two proration problems. So that's the answer to question one. What is the amount that will be prorated and, and to who will be debited and credited? 975 is the amount, buyer is debited, seller is credited, that amount. So that answers question one. Question two asks how much is the seller going to have to bring to the closing table to purchase this property with these parameters. <coughs> Pardon me. So what I'm going to do is go through each of these items and first ask myself, does it affect the buyer? Positively or negatively, does it affect them? If the answer is yes, I'm going to ask, is it a debit or a credit to them? 
Is it something their money they're going to have to pay? Or is it money they're going to receive? If the answer is no, I move on. I don't have to worry about it. So I start at the top. The purchase price, does that affect the buyer? The answer is yes. They're paying that money toward the house. So is that money they're paying as a, as a debit? Or is it money they're receiving as a credit? It's a debit. They're paying that. This is just my accounting mind of how I do this. Anything that's a debit is in parentheses. If anybody runs a spreadsheet or does any kind of mathematical calculation, a debit, a negative amount, is in parentheses. If you want to put negative 145, meaning that I'm coming up with $145,000, I'm subtracting $145,000 from my wallet, it's a negative amount, a debited amount. I put it in parentheses. <coughs> Pardon me, the earnest money, does that affect the buyer? Yes. The answer is yes it is. Yes, it, yes, it does. Is it a debit or is it a credit to them? Credit. It's a credit to them, correct. So earnest money is money that the buyer pledged at the beginning of this transaction promising that if I buy this property, I'm getting it back. If I don't buy the property, the seller might get to keep it. If I back out for no good reason, the seller gets to keep it. That's kind of the purpose of it. But we're going forward with that. We're closing, obviously, so the buyer gets that money back. So it is a debit, I'm sorry, it is a credit to them, 1500 bucks. The commission, is that something that the buyer has to worry about? The answer is no, the seller's gonna pay for it. Tax stamps, we talked about one of the previous pages, tax stamps are a seller charge. So we don't have to worry about that. The title, it tells us is paid by the seller. So I don't have to worry about that either. It, it specifically says that. The deed, does that affect the buyer? The answer is yes, it does, because the deed is the transfer of the property from the seller to the buyer. The buyer wants this deed. It benefits the buyer to have this deed, so they're going to be charged for that. It's, a 100, it's $100, and it's a debit. They're going to have to pay for that. The closing fee of $350, it tells us that it's split 50-50, so I don't have to think about it. it just, the only thing I have to think about is what's half of $350, and that's $175, and again, it's a debit. Mortgage payoff, does that affect the buyer? The answer is no. It's a payoff, meaning that there's an existing mortgage that has to be paid off, so that affects the seller. If it said uh, loan from lender or something like that, then it might affect the buyer and that would be a credit, but we're, we're not worried about that. The last thing are the taxes, which we just did in question one, and we know that that was $975 and that was also a debit. So when we add up all the minuses and, and, and include the addition for the 1500, you should get 144,750. So the buyer is going to have to bring, bring a check or get a mortgage or whatever, $144,750 to buy this home. So that is their debited amount, which is what question two is asking. Sometimes people struggle with this math because you, and again, on a calculator, you would hit the minus sign, you'd hit minus 4,500, I'm sorry, 145,000, I can't even came up with that. You would press the minus sign, 145,000 plus 15, minus 100, minus 175, minus 975, and you should get your calculator, should have a negative 144,750 if you've done it right. The third and final question is, how much is the seller going to get at this closing table? They're getting this money, they're closing on their home, they're transferring it, how much do they get to walk away with? How much is actually theirs? The 145 is not all theirs. So I go through the same steps, but I go through it from the buyer, I'm sorry, from the seller's perspective. So we start at the top again. Does that affect the seller? The answer is yes. They're getting that money. It's a credit to them. So they're getting $145,000. The earnest money, does that affect the seller? Yeah. 
You're making it too easy or too complicated. You're talking about the real world. We're not talking about the real world here, Emily. It does not affect the seller. The seller is not holding this money. The seller would get the money if the buyer didn't go through with the purchase. But in this case, the earnest money is just being held by the broker. It's being held by a, a third party. Buyer nor seller are holding it right now. So at the closing table, where is it coming from? The seller isn't holding it. The agent's holding it. The broker's holding it. The title company, some third party is holding that money. So this does not affect the seller. A lot of people would guess seller because the seller would get it if the buyer didn't close, but the seller isn't holding this. So this has no impact on the seller at all. Excuse me. The commission, 7%. We already talked that does affect the seller. How would we calculate that? We take the purchase price of 145,000, multiply that times 7%, and it's 13,000 and what is it? How much? Is it 10,150? I'm sorry. I'm going off of memory. And that is a debit. That's a charge that they're coming up with, money that they're going to have to pay. The tax stance we already said was a seller charge, so that's $150 there. A debit. Title fee we already said is paid for by the seller. That's $250. Debit. The deed we already covered here on the buyer side. The closing is split 50-50, so it's $175. The mortgage payoff, $32,575. We have the taxes. Again, the buyer is giving them a debt or a credit. So after they get the purchase price, pay commissions, pay the uh, tax stamps, title, half the closing, pay off their mortgage, and they get some of the taxes back that they paid, they're going to walk away with 102675 So they will get a check for $102,675.